a very warm greeting to you this morning. It is great to gather here after the festivities of our garage sale, but more about that a little bit later on. As we gather here, we acknowledge the death of Her Majesty Elizabeth II. By the grace of God, Queen of New Zealand, who knew other realms and territories, head of the Commonwealth, defender of the faith. As head of the Church of England, she was always born witness to her faith. So before we continue our usual part of the service, I want to pause for a minute's silence and at the conclusion of that, offer up a prayer. Gracious God, nothing in death or life, in the world as it is or the world as it shall be, nothing in all creation can separate us from your love. We commend your servant Elizabeth into your loving care. Enfold her in the arms of your mercy. Bless her in her dying and in her rising again in you. Bless those whose hearts are filled with sadness that they too may know the hope of the resurrection for the sake of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And during the service and afterwards, if you would like to light a candle in her memory, we've got a, a special place dedicated over there to one side. But to our service. And there is a sense of festivity. The eight o'clock is, of course, no, the garage sale total. They've already gone off with big smiles on their faces and you'll need to wait just a little bit longer. We have Nigel here as our liturgist and uh, a fantastic blessing of Anne Priestley. I've so enjoyed listening to her preach this morning and I'm looking forward to actually hearing it all over again. Interesting title. You might be think Dust Bunnies and Delight. That will keep you um, interestingly tantalised until we get to that point. But let us come and praise God. That's what we're here for. So we, our opening hymn is lift, Lord, we lift your name on high. Let's stand to worship God. Good morning, everybody. Uh, our service today is from page 456, and thanks to the wonders of technology and two very clever fellows down the back, it will be on the screen for you. So uh, please uh, sit down.
In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our creator. Beloved, our beginning and without end, in our midst and with us. God is with us. Here we find new life. Let us give thanks for the coming of God's reign of justice and love. Jesus Christ is good news for the poor, recovery, recovery of sight for the blind, and liberty for those who are oppressed. Now we come to a time of prayer. Happy are those whose sins are forgiven, whose wrongs are pardoned. I will confess my sins to the Lord. I will not conceal my wrongdoings. And we say together, God forgives and heals us. We need your healing, merciful God. Give us true repentance. Some sins are plain to us. Some escape us. Some we cannot face. Forgive us. Set us free to hear your word to us. Set us free to serve. Our sentence today comes from Luke. Jesus says, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And we pray together this morning's prayer. Rejoicing God, you pursue us more than we seek after you. And tenderly rejoice when we find our life in you. May we share in your delight and in your care for the lonely and the lost. Through Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, would the readers like to come forward and read, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Our young folk, do we have any? Youth and children? Now's your big moment to uh, head on out. Go well. Right. Loving God, the joy we see and have in the, in the, in the new lives, the young lives in, in our world. They are our hope. They're our future. They are our quest for, for life itself. We pray that you are with them today and every day from here on. Through Jesus' name, this we pray. Amen. A reading from Exodus chapter 32, beginning at verse 7. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once, your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, 
whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of the heavens. And all this land that I have promised, I will give to you, I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 1. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 15, beginning at the first verse. Praise Praise and glory to God. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them of this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, 
he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. Or, what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to God. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The title of uh, Louise's sermon last week, as you may remember, was Eyes Wide Open. And I, it came to me as a bit of a challenge, and perhaps for you too. Are we really ready for what it takes to become followers of Jesus? As, the re, as she reminded us, it's going to be tough. Do we really know what we're getting into? And as we sort out our priorities, will we put God first? I reckon it was a good sermon to prepare us for the rigors of last week <laughs> as we got ready for that garage sale yesterday. You weary? Um, after you may well be, and you think you may well be thinking, yep, I know a bit about commitment. Good on you. Uh, who also knew, I wonder, uh, that participating in a church garage sale is a spiritual discipline? More about that later. But we may notice commitment, yep, endurance, and at times opportunities to offer grace and kindness. <coughs> Big thanks to the kitchen staff in that regard. We probably all benefited, didn't we? Eyes wide open. And who knows just how far the future Queen Elizabeth II could see when, aged 21, she made her own commitment to serve her people. I declare before you, she said, before you all, that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. A statement that would ring true throughout her life. There have been many tributes to her undeviating devotion to duty, her stoicism, her dignity, her unshakable resolve, as well as that leaven of compassion, the twinkle in the eye, her sense of humor. We've thought already, um, but we may notice it's much, more, much less widely commented in the ordinary press, um, that the importance of her faith in God, in the Lord Jesus who walked the path all the way to the cross, who died for her, and strengthened her, helped her to keep on walking that difficult path. Jesus called a future queen. Jesus calls us. And as we learn to be disciples along our paths, the emphasis is rightly on our response. Are we ready? Can we do what it takes? And that emphasis on right actions, right response to a loving God, uh, runs through our readings today. Um, the first read, uh, in fact, all of them, really. In that first reading, 
uh, there. Uh, we can think of um, this Mount Sinai where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. In fact, um, God gave Moses so many commandments, it took quite a long time, lots of chapters in Exodus um, to get through as God told Moses what to do. And uh, meanwhile, the people down below um, were missing Moses and they got restive. And that was the stage at which Aaron made them the golden calf. Uh, and uh, called, uh, so they could worship um, a, a god. And that's the context for our first reading. Uh, and we may notice that uh, God actually disowns the people. He says to Moses, your people whom you led out of Egypt. Hello, actually, whose people are they? That's what God's saying. Your people, they've acted perversely. They've turned away. They've done wrong things and there will be consequences. And in the gospel. There's two wonderful stories about the good shepherd and the devoted housewife. It starts with an interesting comment. The Pharisees, now these are the ones who are most concerned about trying to live a really good life, uh, a pure and holy life, in, in ordinary, um, ordinary life uh, before God. Uh, these, these are lay people um, you know, really wanting to follow God well. And they've got a problem with Jesus because he doesn't keep himself pure or separate from wrongdoers and sinners. These are good people who are having trouble. Jesus, in fact, hangs out with collaborators. Those are the tax collectors working for the empire. They're the ones who, who deal with Rome, and uh, they, they're, they're extortionate, they're traitors, uh, uh, and Jesus is welcoming them, eating with them, for goodness sake. How could a respectable teacher act that way? Well, both Exodus and Luke's Gospel bring us back to who God is. That's the good news the scandalous good news that it's all about God and who God is. God, most of all, does indeed. God wants us to grow in grace and to, to act out the goodness that we've received. But above all things, God wants to be in relationship with us, wants us to belong, at, be at home with God, uh, God whom we know as Trinity, a God of relationship within the depths of the divine being itself. And that's what we see in the stories which Luke brings us. Uh, first of all, that shepherd who risks everything, uh, everything um, leaves the livelihood of the 99 sheep to search out that one single straying sheep, lost, and brings brings that sheep home. The shepherd searches until the, the shepherd finds the sheep. No ifs or buts. It's when the shepherd finds the sheep. And then there's that jo joy and rejoicing and delight and an amazing feast. And then there's the woman, the housekeeper. She has 10 silver coins. Now, you might think that a silver coin is a big thing which you w wouldn't lose, would you? Let me tell you something. Silver coins, a little silver coin like they had in those days, it's a small thing. Yay. Can you see it? Get your magnifying glass out. This is a silver coin from about 200 years after Jesus. This coin was worth a day's wage. And it's little, weeny, isn't it? You could lose it if, you're the, if you've got your ten coins sort of wrapped up in a scarf and maybe there was a hole. And, or maybe the kids, kids got playing. Oh, crumbs. Yes, things happen with kids, don't they? Wasn't the coins, was it the coins' fault that it got lost? I don't think so. Something went wrong. Things do go wrong in life. It's nobody's fault, necessarily. That coin got lost. And what does the woman do? Turns on the lights, sweeps out the house, searches carefully. Spring cleaning, maybe. Timely thought. Just one coin 
but it was valuable. And she sweeps and she cleans and she sweeps under the bed and finds those dust bunnies. I'm sure it doesn't happen in your house, but I know about dust bunnies, those collections of fluff and stuff. Anyway, random stuff. And she sorts and she searches until she finds the coin. And then there's that delight in heaven. The good news of today's reading is all about God. God the shepherd, God the housekeeper, God who is much else besides seeking relationship where connections have been broken. God makes a way back for us when things have gone wrong. A way back so that, the, that relationships can be as they should be. And do you know, that strange reading from Exodus shows us exactly the same. Yeah, God's angry, all right. But when Moses reminds God about the relationships of old, those relationships of faith and trust between God and Abraham, God and Isaac, God and Jacob or Israel, the Lord, Exodus says, the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. Moses very carefully says, God, they're your people. Remember? Okay. Mm, sorted. And so maybe it was Moses who changed God's mind? Or maybe, maybe Moses, in this emergency, remembered or discovered the truth about God. The deeper, deeper truth than the fact that God is holy. Deeper truth than the fact that God summons us to act as God's people. The deepest truth is that God desires relationship with us. God wants us all, sinners and Pharisees alike, to belong. And as we in turn realize this and start to live it out, we, uh, the angels of God are delighting and rejoicing in heaven. Of course we'll fail. But God is the God not just of second chances, but of as many chances as it takes for us to, to, be, to begin to turn and to be welcomed back. And so gradually we learn the truth and gradually we start to live that truth, acting as if we believed it. And what about those Pharisees? Well, I can't tell you about those exact ones in Luke's Gospel. But I think there's probably a bit of Pharisee in most people. I said that the garage tale is a work of spiritual discipline. Okay. It was certainly true at the preserve stall yesterday. Now, the person staffing that stall was very happy when people said, hey, keep the change. You know, um, uh, the, the, the preserves cost $23. Well, here's $25. Keep the change. You know, church can deal with, do with it. Um, and uh, when, the, when the cost was um, nine, um, $19, they'd say, here's $20. That's fine. Um, but, you know, there was a customer who came along, collected a haul of jars, and they totted up to about $35 and looked in the wallet and he handed and he said, look, let's make that 30, the customer said. I looked at those jars. I know the work that goes into making the jams. Oh, I said, oh, okay. And I accepted it. But unlike all the other people, I didn't send that man off with a cheerful, thank you so much, or, you know, bye-bye, happy eating. Um, I was able to do it for all the other ones, but... Mm. And, you know, maybe that customer had spent up to his limit. Maybe he'd spent everything else on the, all your other stalls. Um, or maybe he needed extra money to buy food for his family. Maybe he just needed to feel he won himself a deal, good deal that he'd done well, to feel big or happy or accepted. Was that my business? The Pharisee in me rem needs to be reminded that everybody needs welcoming. And when I don't approve of someone or what they do, 
that's my spiritual issue. That's my moment for growth. To tell you the truth, I think that God, in the unlimited potential of divine creativity, has a place for dust bunnies as well. That diligent housewife, if she knew her stuff, would put the, and I'm sure she did, would put the dust bunnies on the compost heap, and next year there would be lovely flowers or vegetables. God sees the potential within, within everything, potential for growth and change, glory and delight. It's not about us. It is about God. God's love and God's mercy. Living out of that truth, Paul set forth on his journey with Jesus. Living out of this truth, the queen sustained trials and second chances in her long reign. Queen or king or commoner, Pharisee or publican, or sinner. God delights in each one of us and invites each one of us to become more fully what God designs. Living out of this truth, let's keep our eyes on Jesus and stay alert to the adventure of our faith and the adventure of our lives. Loving Father, loving Mother, we may be wandering, we may be lost, or we may feel ourselves securely in your embrace. Help us to trust you and discover you with us in all circumstances, whatever this day may bring. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Anne. What didn't? What didn't? <laughs> Let's stand and affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's, uh, let's sit and pray together. Thank you. To the bidding, uh, let us bless the Lord. Let's say thanks be to God. Almighty and all-seeing God, we gather this morning as the first warmth of spring spells the end of a long and difficult winter for so many. We give thanks that we are blessed. We are, have been and are safe and warm in our homes, and we are safe in this special place of worship, which means so much to us. Saviour Jesus, we pray for those less fortunate within our community, within our city, and across the world. We pray that they may know the comfort of your loving and divine spirit be upon them, and may they feel your guiding hand leading them to improving their situation, and may they pre be protected from the dangers of this modern world. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, when we elect our civic and community leaders, we pray that those who would put themselves forward to fill these roles, do so with knowledge and wisdom and genuine desire to serve the community. Saviour Jesus, you lead the way. You set the example of leadership, service and ultimately supreme sacrifice. A lesson for life as real and relevant and important today as it was 2,000 years ago. For this divine gift, we give you thanks. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And on this bright Sunday morning, after a huge day of work and freely given service to our church and to each other, we give thanks for the God-given emotion that dwells in us all, the desire to help one another, the desire to work together, the desire to share our victories and failures, the desires to laugh and cry together, quite simply the desire to be as one. Almighty God, you created us, and in your divine wisdom, you included this in our makeup, and your son, Jesus of Nazareth, walked this earth and showed us how to use it for the good of all. What greater gift could there be? And now, my friends, I was writing these prayers early yesterday morning, or Friday morning, and I had quite literally written what I have just just read, with you, uh, prayed with you. And my wife called out to me that Queen Elizabeth had died. So it is with <laughs> great humility and a sense of total inadequacy that, uh, that I offer this prayer on behalf of us all. God our Saviour, you have taken our beloved Queen Elizabeth into your care. Not many who have walked this earth would stand before you and be more deserving of your praise and commendation for a lifetime of service, a lifetime of stability and consistency in a world sadly lacking in both, a lifetime of being on show in the public eye, open to criticism for the slightest misstep or word. A lifetime as a wife and a mother and a grandmother and a great-grandmother. Tasks difficult enough, but made impossibly so by the fishbowl of an ever-inclusive media, intrusive. Almighty God, in Elizabeth's reign, the world has changed beyond recognition. And we, your people, give thanks. We give thanks. For this woman, and we commend her to your loving and eternal care. Let us bless the Lord. I, I apologize, I'm sorry. And so, as we farewell our Queen, we welcome and pray for our new King. Almighty God, we pray for Charles as he takes on this most demanding role one for which he has waited and trained for all his life. We know that like his mother, he is a man of deep faith. And we ask that he will continue to feel the loving and guiding hand of our Saviour Jesus in the days and the weeks and the months and the years ahead. Let us pray in silence for ourselves, opening our hearts to a God who loves us, a God who cares for us, and a God who who prepares a place for us. With much thanks, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. the time in our service where we have an opportunity to exchange the peace. So I invite you to stand. Kia whakapaini a te karaiti, te ariki o te rongamo. Blessed be Christ, the Prince of Peace, breaks down the walls that divide. The peace of God be always with you. Praise to Christ who unites us in peace. And I invite you to turn to those around you and exchange those symbols of peace with one another.
uh, offertory hymn is The King of Love My Shepherd Is. And we continue not to pass our offertory bag around at the moment, remembering the offertory box is at the rear. So The King of Love My Shepherd Is. <laughs> Loving God, we give you thanks for these gifts, food for the city mission and money for ministry in this place. May those, all those who receive, be blessed by these offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. God's spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. Is it indeed right always and everywhere to give thanks to you, the true and living God, through Jesus Christ? You are the source of life for all creation, and you made us in your own image. In your love for us, you sent your Son to be our Saviour. In the fullness of time, he became incarnate, suffered death on the cross. So you raised him to triumph and exalted him in glory. Through him you send your Holy Spirit upon your church and make us your people. And so we proclaim your glory as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you indeed be glory, almighty God, because on the night before he died, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks... He gave it to them and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. So with thanksgiving and hope we say, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Your death we show forth. Your resurrection we proclaim. Your coming we await. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Therefore, loving God, recalling now Christ's res death and resurrection, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us in our celebration, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son, and be filled with your life and goodness. 
Strengthen us to do your work and to be your body in the world. United in Christ, with through the power of the Holy Spirit, we raise to you, O God, our songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing honour and, and glory be yours, here and everywhere, here. now and forever. Amen. And now, as Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Christ's body was broken for us on the cross. Christ is the bread of life. His blood was shed for our forgiveness. Christ is risen from the dead. So come, God's people, come to receive Christ's heavenly food. We might like to just be seated as our team arrange ourselves up here. For those people who are visiting, just a reminder that there is hand sanitizer as you come forward. You're welcome to come and accept communion in one kind, just the wafer, or in the small cups with grape juice, or in the chalice. And of course, over here, we've got some candles if you wish to partake in lighting one of those. So come, God's people. The table is ready. Come forward, thank you. Just the people at the end. We're doing chalice, go around the others.
your goodness will leave me high. As we hear those words, let us offer up our prayer after communion. Most loving God, creator and redeemer, we give you thanks for this foretaste of your glory. Through Christ and with all your saints, we offer ourselves and our lives to your service. Send us out in the power of your spirit to stand with you and your world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the servant, our friend and brother. Amen. And as we go from here, with those words resounding about our relationship with God and the challenge of what that looks like, remembering to sweep away those dust mites, dust bunnies, May you go with the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. I was just going to start with celebrations and anniversaries. And I suddenly realized we never did that at 8 o'clock. We're too excited about the garage sale. So, <laughs> celebrations, anniversaries, birthdays. We're dobbing people in. Garth? <laughs> Garth's too tired to raise his hand. Sue did it for him. Birthday, Garth? Have we got some chocolate? Me and Nigel, you're on duty. We've got some little bookmarks for those people who are like diabetic or don't want to, you know, increase the waistline. We've now got some, some bookmarks. Any, Garth will have chocolate. <laughs> Any other anniversaries or birthdays? Veronica, birthday? Oh, the safe arrival of a grandson. Well, that's certainly something to celebrate too. Fantastic. Alrighty. No, any others? No, that's our lot. I don't know about you, but going around the garage sale, there were just so many evidence of God's hand all over the place. So hopefully you've sort of caught glimpses of that. You know, right from the the Tuesday where it was meant to be pouring with rain. Or was it Monday? Any Monday. And it was raining all day, and at four o'clock we went to unpack the bunker, and it stopped raining and held tight till about five to six. And I said to everyone, well, we're meant to stop at six. I reckon, I think we're done. You know, <laughs> the rain's coming. And yesterday, and all last week, the weather forecast was for rain on Saturday, and I'm thinking, okay, and we'll have to just manage with the rain, and actually the sun shone. And just and stories of, um, I'd seen a little stall that had Danica on it, and I'm thinking, oh, Lilo, the holders have been clearing out, you know, because that's the only Danica I know. And I was going to give them a hard time about it, and Gail came up to me so excited. She said, you'll never guess. I was going past the stall, and I saw this little stall that's got Danica on it. I said, well, isn't that your grandchild's one? No. And it's like, you know, of all the named seats to be there, Danica is not that common a name. It's just like, wow, 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 wow. So, without further ado, John Glennie did the announcement at the other service. I thought Liz might be here, but maybe she's putting her feet up. The total. At the moment, it could easily grow and is expected to grow, is 26,266 dollars. <laughs> When Anne came up and told me we were unstacking some other clothes up on the stage, I actually started to cry. I said, oh, where did that one come from? That is an amazing effort. And please pass on our thanks. So there, there, I reckon there was at least a third of the helpers weren't St Aidan's regulars that I, you know, people we don't normally see apart from maybe St Garage Sale time. So please pass our thanks on to all those people who helped. Now, I know you want to know your area's totals. We'll post them up next week because there might be some rejigging. But at the moment, here, here are the totals. Get your Antiques and high-end combined together raised $6,000. Plants, $1,145. Barbecue, $391. Cakes, $709.80. We won't do the cents. Toys, $3,160 for toys. Jewelry, $566 for jewelry. Linen, $1,158. Jams and preserves, $914. Books, wow. And they're still going to be moved on to someone else. Boxes and boxes of books. 
$1,575. Bric-a-brac, $1,837. Electrical, $1,093. Furniture and sporting goods, are you listening, Deepak? $1,588. Clothing, thankless task, isn't it? Clothing, $2,512. Morning teas, 323, but remember a lot of us benefited from those and we didn't pay a cent. Thank you. Raffles, $184. Paintings, $289. And our Christmas store that was put together at the last minute, $133. So well done again, everybody. There are some muffins out there. They have already, I think many of them been through the freezer already because they were ready for that morning tea. If you would like to take some muffins home, by all means, make a contribution. Jenny will be out there, and I think there's jams and preserves out there just before they pack that stall away. Thank you to everybody. I'm not going to read through the rest of the newsletter. You can do that. Let's close our service with our closing hymn. And you can see the beautiful pictures up there. Come closer. Um, amazing grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Why don't we stand to conclude our service? Thanks be to God. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. Thanks, Jesus. Thanks, Jesus.